Afghanistan had been putting on a show of normalcy. It was even trying to woo foreign tourists to visit the country, and it seemed to be working. The number of people visiting Afghanistan actually went up. When we first told you about this tourism boom here on Gravitas, we raised a crucial question. Who or what would ensure tourist safety in a volatile Afghanistan? Well, nothing, it seems. Over the weekend, three Spanish tourists were shot dead in the central Afghan city of Bamiyan. Other four foreigners were injured. Later, the Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack. It's the most serious attack targeting foreigners ever since the American forces left and the Taliban took over in 2021. The civil war may have ended, but it seems the fighting season is back in Afghanistan. Anti-Taliban insurgency is on the rise. And it's not just the Islamic State. Taliban needs to look out for the National Resistance Front or the NRF as well. It is controlled by an anti-Taliban politician, Ahmad Masood. Masood lives in Tajikistan and controls his troops in exile. In an interview with The Spectator, he claimed that the NRF has staged 31 attacks on the Taliban in Kabul in the past 31 days. Their latest hit was merely 500 meters from the presidential palace. Masood also boasted that after all these attacks, none of the members from his group have been captured. Why is the NRF targeting the, attacking the Taliban, you ask? What does it want? To destroy Afghanistan's Islamic Emirate and install a democratic republic. The group came together when Western forces fled during the Taliban takeover. As the Islamists swept from Kandahar in the south up to Kabul, Afghan army soldiers joined a group of fighters in Panjshir in the north. Now, from a small area of land, they conduct guerrilla operations in half of Afghanistan's 34 provinces. Still, Masood says he does not have the firepower to launch a total assault on the Taliban administration. The group's missions are limited. It could be a drive-by shooting at a checkpoint or an ambush on the Taliban camp, but it cannot afford to do anything more. After all, it depends on the weapons left behind by the Americans and the Soviets. As for supplies, it gets them from Afghanistan's black markets. However, Masood believes with proper support, ideally Western arms, it is possible to defeat the Taliban. He also says that his forces are ready to do more. The man trades on the reputation of his father, Emma Shah Masood. He was a hero of Afghanistan's resistance against the Soviets. Back in the late 1970s and 1980s, Masood Sr. repelled several attempted invasions of Panjshir when the Taliban tried to take over in the 1990s. He led the Northern Alliance of rebel groups against them. The US and the UK also worked with the alliance to depose the Taliban in 2002. Masood Sr. had been supported by Western intelligence for decades. Is that what Masood Jr. is also seeking? Three years ago, French and American intelligence services considered backing him against the Taliban, but Masood Jr. says it was far from enough. He met with a lot of military personnel before the Taliban's assault, but says he wasn't given any weapons or intelligence. He fled Kabul as the Taliban closed in on the capital and then tried to negotiate with the Islamists in return for a ceasefire. He asked for free nationwide elections, but was told to surrender or die. And so he took a helicopter and flew to Tajikistan. And from there, he is launching assaults on the Taliban. He is also seeking support from the UK. In exchange, he says he will stop the small boats carrying illegal migrants from Afghanistan to the UK. But would Britain take up his proposal is the question. If Masood Jr. gets the weapons he wants, Will he launch a nationwide war against the Taliban? What did you have for breakfast today? Was it a toast with a generous serving of butter and cheese, perhaps? Or was it some breakfast cereal with milk? Or if you are a fitness enthusiast, then maybe some protein pancakes with a dollop of peanut butter. 
If you had any of these dishes or something similar, I am sorry to break it to you, but you started your day with ultra ultra processed food. Are you shocked? If not, you will be once you listen to the entire list. I'm talking about the latest dietary guidelines released by the Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR. It has advised against consuming level C processed foods excessively. And which food products are these exactly? I can confidently say you will find some of them if you open your pantry right now. According to the ICMR, Group C food items include commercially produced bread, breakfast cereals, cakes, chips, biscuits, fries, jams, sauces, mayonnaise, ice cream. Also seemingly healthy products like protein powders, peanut butter, soy chunks, tofu, paneer. Now the obvious ones such as frozen foods with additives, cheese, butter, meats, plant-based meats, refined flours or, or cereals, millets, legumes, energy drinks, health drinks added to milk, beverages and fruit juices. And then there are culinary ingredients like cooking oils, refined sugars, salt and spices. That's because food additives like artificial colors and emulsifiers are often used in their processing. Are you thinking what we are thinking? What do we even eat then? Now it's a known fact that the food we eat has to undergo some processing to make it suitable for consumption. Grains are turned into flour, milk has to be pasteurized, fruits have to be refrigerated. The healthiest of food items need some degree of processing. Does it make them unfit to eat? No, it doesn't. Then when do you need to be cautious exactly? When producers overdo it, as in they ultra process the food in the greed to improve the taste, the appearance or shelf life of the food products. Many companies subject their food products to extensive industrial processing. They add concerning amounts of additives, preservatives, sweeteners, colorings, flavorings, emulsifiers, many other substances, substances that have no business being in the food or your body. These ultra-processed foods tend to be excessively high in fats and low in fibers and essential nutrients. Studies, in fact, have shown that a diet rich in such items can lead to obesity, hasten aging, and increase the risk of heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and poorer overall health. But here comes the worst part. Such food items are cheap, readily accessible, easy to eat. Now, would you expect a youngster living alone to make a roti or just get a loaf of bread? Would you expect them to make ghee at home or simply buy butter? What would stop them from buying these products? They barely cost 50 rupees. Simply put, producers need to do better to maintain the nutrition in the food item when they are making it. Why not regulate food and beverages companies more strictly so that the products that reach the shelves of our supermarkets are not so harmful to begin with. Last night, the skies of Spain and Portugal lit up in bright tones of blue and green. Several videos have surfaced on the internet. It was a visual treat for the residents to say the least. What led to this? How rare is it? Are you likely to see this happening again anytime soon? Our next report explores. Over the weekend, people of Spain and Portugal met a visitor from outer space. Nobody had been expecting it. It came in the form of a fireball, streaking across the sky. Behind itself, it left a smoldering trail of graffiti. The video shared on the internet show a dark night slowly transitioning into day and blazing in shades of green and blue. It wasn't the ordinary blue you get to see every day. How did this happen? Earlier it was thought to be due to an asteroid, 
After all, rocky asteroids paint sky-high streaks as they slowly die in the Earth's atmosphere. But it didn't quite add up. This visitor was plunging towards the Earth at a remarkable speed, more than twice of what's expected of a typical asteroid. So, who do we thank for the weekend's dazzling view? A fragment of a comet. Scientists believe the icy object may have formed at the dawn of the solar system. It lost its battle with our planet's atmosphere a few miles above the Atlantic Ocean. None of its parts made it to the ground. However, revelers in Spain and Portugal got to enjoy a memorable night. It isn't rare for comets to create shooting stars. We have multiple meteor showers throughout the year. They occur when the Earth passes through debris clouds of specific comets. Air in front of the objects gets compressed and heats up. It erodes, cracks open and obliterates the debris. This destructive process releases light and, if the projectile is big enough, a powerful shockwave too. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One.